One of the sub-themes of this show over the last few years has been the plateauing, the converging of hardware in terms of almost any phone over a certain price and functionality point being eminently good enough for almost any purpose. There are still shining lights, of course, LG's recent work in imaging on the G4, Apple's 3D Touch implementation, the purity of Android on the Nexus devices, and so on. But an awful lot of Android smartphones in particular are coming from very similar Chinese factories with very similar, though capable, specifications. Witness these two smartphones, the new Wiley Fox Storm and the newish Alcatel Idol 3 5.5 inches. You remember I reviewed the smaller sister phone back in Phone Show 261. Their form factor and spec is very, very similar. So what I'm going to do is present the Storm first and then explain any differences afterwards. And so to this brand new name for smartphones, Wiley Fox, and it's British. OK, so the phones themselves are made in China and the components somewhat generic, but there's some attention to detail here, which is well worth noting. This also extends to the use of Cyanogen OS 12.1, effectively Android 5.1, with a load of extra customizability and privacy settings. Otherwise, it's a vanilla interface that you'll all recognize. OnePlus famously also signed up to Cyanogen before falling out with the company, but Wiley Fox makes excellent use of the OS, using its benefits as a big factor in the marketing. But on with the hardware, this is a big 5.5 inch screen phone with 3 gig of RAM inside, 3 gig and an excellent camera, at least for the price, less than £200, all in the UK. I highlight these three factors because they're absolutely key to the modern smartphone experience. A good screen, plenty of RAM for the OS and applications to run in unhampered and good imaging that won't let you down. Of course, something's got to give and it's not all roses here, but at least we're off to a promising start. The Storm itself is well made in polycarbonate with a rather special textured back and Wiley Fox embossed logo. The camera island is detailed with an orange surround and looks very cool. Around the front is a deliberately recessed display to protect from drops. It's not branded Gorilla Glass, but is merely toughened glass. And Wiley Fox takes no chances shipping this from the factory with a Sony style screen protector, which is fair enough for normal mobs, but uh, I can't stand the feel of swiping plastic. So 10 seconds extra peeling and I was working with this naked display and it's absolutely fine. 1080p is fine too, even at 5.5 inches here, especially in this price bracket but this is dimmer than most. Beneath the display are three backlit capacitive controls. Good to see in an age when most phones go virtual to save money. And you then lose screen real estate. Better yet, the center home control doubles as a charging and notifications light, which is very useful and cool. On the side is an extended tray following the lead of Huawei and others by having a combined dual SIM micro SD system. You get to pick two from three and somehow they all stack in and connect up. For most people, a micro SIM and micro SD will be fine, though there's an impressive 32 gig of internal storage as well. So a card isn't an immediate necessity. The mono speaker is hidden behind part of a grill here on the back and it's loud but harsh. Here's a demo. This is full volume though. Sort of blast rate. Amazing, that's about 30, 40 years ago. Wow. <laughs> About what you'd expect for a sub £200 handset, though. Uh, but fewer corners have been cut on the camera. Now, it's a generic Sony 20 megapixel sensor and no-name plastic optics, but the Cyanogen camera software and algorithms do a decent job of lifting images from average to, well, not bad at all. See the samples here. As with the Nexus devices, the use of HDR usually helps by effectively giving images more punch and more dynamic range. Focusing is slow though, there's no phase detection or laser aids here, and there's obviously a truckload of noise reduction and edge enhancement going on, but the Storm's camera usually comes through with very usable photos. In low light it impresses more than it should though, there's no OIS obviously, and anyone with less steady hands than me might struggle. The camera interface is packed with advanced things to fiddle with and more modes than you can ever think up. Thanks Cyanogen community. The most important thing to set or not set is zero shutter lag, letting you toggle between intelligent multi-shot combinations and advanced rendering and ultra quick grabs of whatever's on the sensor. And half the settings do tend to override the other half. This is a camera UI designed by committee, but the shots are good enough to warrant patience and perseverance, I think.
The front facing camera shows more evidence of outlandish image processing, but it's eight megapixels and has its own selfie LED flash, so still performs much better than most. There have to be some corners cut, of course. £200 for this spec is otherwise too good to be true. There's no NFC. Apparently this isn't big in China where the internals originate. So that's Android Pay and accessory pairing out the window. There's no Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 compatibility. In fact, there's not even a charger in the box. It's assumed that you'll use the supplied micro USB cable with the charging source of your choice. The processor's merely a Snapdragon 615, though in fairness, the UI does zip along fairly nicely, thanks to that three gigabytes of RAM. And the sealed battery is only 2,500 milliamp hours. We're used to phablets coming in with well over 3,000. And as a result, the Wiley Fox Storm does make it through a heavy day, but without much to spare, despite the modest processor. And there's no fingerprint scanner, of course. You wouldn't expect one at this price, perhaps, but it's worth noting anyway. The highlights of Cyanogen's additions and what make it a smart choice for Wiley Fox are the privacy and security extensions to Android. There's more here than I can possibly list, but I was taken by the randomly scrambled pin layout so no one could use finger smudges on the glass as a clue. And the ability to spot when an application is misusing SMS with various limits and permissions you can impose, plus the usual lollipop encryption functions, of course. There's also Cyanogen's extensive theming. Hundreds of free and premium themes allow complete control over wallpapers, icons, sounds, boot animation, yeah, fonts and more. A new look for your phone every day or a confusing barrier to productivity. Well, at least it's your call. The only significant addition to the stock Android application set is Audio FX, a system-wide equalizer with dozens of presets with bass boost and a virtualizer. Very nice indeed. I'm torn on the Wiley Fox Storm, I really am. While I can't really forgive the omission of NFC as we head into 2016, that three gigabytes of RAM allocation does mean there's quite a bit of future proofing in the application department, and most other components are sensible choices in a sub £200 4G Android smartphone. Hand the Wiley Fox Storm to someone to use for a day. Tell them it's a £500 flagship, and only the real geeks will spot that you haven't been quite straight with them which has to be a compliment and ultimately a vote of confidence. More like this, please, Wiley Fox. And now for this, the Alcatel Idol 3 5.5. There's a real sense of deja vu on the specs. It even comes with the same factory fitted screen protector, but there are some significant details that do differ. The Idol 3 is slightly smaller, slightly thinner, despite having the same 5.5 inch screen and despite having monster branded front facing stereo speakers. Here's a demo. I can hear bass and I can really hear the treble as well. Very high fidelity. Hopefully you can tell the difference even on the video. Thank you, Mark. The Idle 3 also has a much bigger 29, 10 milliamp hour battery, giving it a day and a half on a charge. It has NFC. Uh, on the minus side, there's only two gig of RAM and a 13 megapixel camera, which takes eminently less impressive shots. This is clearly an older sensor. Plus it uses virtual controls, meaning that you lose half an inch of that screen a lot of the time. The idle uses Alcatel's Android skin, plus numerous app tweaks, replacements, and some <coughs> bloatware bar. Whereas the Storm's cyanogen is much purer. Which would I pick? Well, it comes down ultimately to a more stock experience and that sumptuous extra gig of RAM on the Storm versus a smaller form factor and the much better loudspeakers and the NFC on the Idle 3. Decision time. I can't. I can't. It's over to you. <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash Which would you go for? The Storm or the Alcatel Idle 3 5.5? <laughs>